Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. What you're about to hear is a bonus episode. A couple of days ago, we recorded some material for the podcast with our friends Nick Thomas and Michael McCall up in Birmingham, Alabama. And the podcast got sidetracked into a uh, roughly 45-minute discussion of the new Star Wars movie, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. And we had a lot of stuff to say about it. So we're just going to release this whole thing as a little bonus episode, something to keep you entertained on Christmas. So hope you like it. Just be aware, obviously, if you clicked on this, the name of the episode is Spoiler Episode. So there will be uh, major spoilers for the new Star Wars movie if you listen to this. So keep that in mind. And without further ado, here is some bonus content. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. Nick Thomas. This is that man of the hour, the tower of power to sweet me sour. We are in the wilds of Birmingham, Alabama with the dirtiest player in the game. I'm Michael McCall. Yay! We all saw Star Wars uh, in the past 24 hours. Uh, how's everybody doing? How, emotionally, how does everybody feel? I've seen it twice. You've seen it twice already? I, I, went, wanna... th- I went Thursday at 7. Oh, shit. So yeah. first showing. Absolutely. I was going to... I took Friday off of work, and I was going to wait, but then the hype was too much. I was like, I'm, I'm going to go get a 7 o'clock ticket. Nick, how, how are you holding up? I want to see it. Like I, I just finished watching it like not even an hour and a half and ago. And that was now. your first viewing? That was my first viewing. Okay. I want to see yeah. it again right now, actually. like It was that good. I kind of do, too. Jesus Christ. It was, it was yeah. amazing. <laughs> I, I loved it. What was? Uh, how are you holding up? Good night, I know. I have to kick... I mean, we can say spoilers. Yeah, well, I, I said spoilers. I mean, it's about Han, man. I was just in oh. shock about Han. I was so pissed off at Kylo Ren and Stimper there. I was waiting for that girl to split his head open during a lightsaber fight. Yeah, if you go see Star Wars again, go with him, because it's the yeah. greatest fucking thing ever. Yeah. He just does commentary the whole fucking time and pisses everybody. Oh, I'm sure everybody was thrilled. <laughs> he, was sh- through him. he was shushed, be- uh, shushed before the fucking opening <laughs> scroll. Somebody actually shushed him. Next so before, before the movie even started, I don't text in movies, you know, just, just because I'm a thoughtful person. Because you're a decent but, human But man. I do all of, you know, during the previews, you know, that's, that's fair game, in my opinion, to shout shit out. You're allowed to shout things out during the previews and also to do my, my texting. And I was texting my friend, and there was a trailer running for the uh, O.J. Simpson uh, TV movie. Oh, the FX the show. The FX TV out. movie. And, and Cuba it, Gooding is O.J. Simpson. Which is, what? you know you know what his, his last role was? Big, Cuba, big Gay Boat with Horatio Sands. <laughs> no, 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 no. Cuba Gooding Jr. was in a Hallmark movie called Gifted Hands, The Life of Ben Carson, which I just found out about, and we're going to review on the podcast. I have to find a version of it, and we're going to talk about it. Can I, can I ask a question? Because I, I, don't, I don't know a lot about, about like not ben, ben Carson and things like this. Does he have prosthetic limbs or something? Because uh, otherwise, how, why come he got gifted hands? Well, he's a he's a, a, a very religious man, and his mother told him that he had, you know, hand, like God she guided said, his she hands. Said, they just tell you that kind of thing so you don't, you know, start doing, you know, the nasty in the toilet when you get a little bit older with the Playboy. But they had the they had the the Cuba Gooding Jr. O.J. Simpson story, and I I didn't know that it was the I was just texting. I was not paying attention to the screen. It, this was like the pre previews, you know, before they dim the lights. And uh, this preview was going, and I wasn't paying attention. I was just texting, and then all of a sudden, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. slams his hand down on the desk. He goes, "I'm not black, damn it! I'm O.J." And I fucking exploded. <laughs> I was la- I laughed for like two solid minutes, like into the next preview. I was still giggling. It caught me so off guard. It was the fucking best. I recommend just shouting that in random places. <laughs> I'm not I- black, damn it! I'm OJ. I mean, do they still have Quaker services? <laughs> you know where everybody waits for the spirit or something. Right. I'm not black. I'm OJ. Yeah. It That's reminds- actually the tagline for the TV show, I think. It's, I'm not black, I'm OJ. I'm OJ. But it reminded me, there was this, I had a similar situation happen in 2009 when I went to go see Inglorious Bastards. 2009, the height of Gerard Butler mania. Uh, if he ever had a high point, it was 2009. And I'm not kidding, they showed three trailers in a row starring Gerard Butler. Uh, the first was the movie called Gamer. Uh, the second was a romantic comedy. And the third, and you know how on Seinfeld, when they go see movies, they always have ridiculous titles? The third sounded like a Seinfeld movie. It was called A Law-Abiding Citizen. 
like it seems like something Jerry and Elaine were like, oh, we're going to go see Rochelle, Rochelle. And they're like, no, 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 let's go see a law abiding citizen or Chunnel. <laughs> you know, I've seen that fucking movie, too. Like against my will, I didn't want to watch it, but I think it's a remake, actually. Is it really of a better movie? <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm glad Gerard Butler Manny is over. Most it. remakes are, by the way. And that's the thing about remakes. They never remake like a mediocre movie. They always remake like a movie that doesn't fucking need it. Right. But it was just funny because, you know, I was just so unaccustomed to seeing th- that's never happened. Three trailers in a row starring the same guy so like it was the first time i didn't take notice of it the second trailer i was like oh that's weird and then when he appeared in the third trailer i started giggling and when i exploded was there was the point where jamie fox is the bad guy and and uh gerard butler's like tied down to a table and jamie fox goes what are you gonna do and gerard butler goes I'm going to kill everybody. And there was an explosion and I fucking lost it. I started laughing from then like into Inglorious Bastards. I was still giggling about it. The problem is that it was three Gerard Butlers too many that day. I don't actually know who Gerard Butler is, so I think I must have slept through a lot. of. He's the guy from the 300. I've never seen that. I've read the the book. The King of Sparta. He read the book. Which king was that? Leonidas. King Leonidas. Yes. Oh, I read the bu- I read both books actually, Brave. the comic book and the- and, and uh, Herodotus. yeah, Herodotus. Brave King Leonidas. Yeah. What did y'all think of uh, Porkins Jr.? I was gonna say we didn't even make it to the goddamn movie yet. We were still stu- no. we're still technically stuck in the trailers. Even before that, though, there's a quick link between O.J. Simpson and Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait because the theater we saw it at was the same theater I was waiting in. Lo- I can't even remember the movie. But someone ran up and said, OJ's on the run from the cops. And we all <laughs> ran into the pizzeria next door. And on a tiny TV in the corner, we watched the Bronco chase. And oh, I don't man. know if we even saw a movie that night. I think we just stayed in the pizza place watching the chase. I was like a, a, a junior in high school. Yeah, was it, uh, was it uh, Cops and Robertsons? Cops and Robertsons is great, too. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've owned out. that movie, actually. <laughs> uh, the director of Fletch made it. It's actually really funny. Yeah. Give it a chance. Let's, uh, let's try to go through the movie beat by beat. Do you think that guy that was uh, from Lost, you know who I'm talking about that was in Star Wars? I've never seen Lost. Well, he was from Lost and he's from that show Heroes. I've uh, never seen Heroes. Greg Grunfeld. Is that his name? Oh, he's in all of JJ's stuff, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. That's kind of his thing, yeah. Well, was he stealing my lines for a minute there. I've never seen Lost. Now, I've never seen Heroes. Nick, don't try to steal my Porkins Jr. joke, by the way, and try to pass it off as your own. <laughs> so because that was what I whispered in your ear during I thought you were talking about the girl with the chubby cheeks that look like Porkins. <laughs> Do you know who I'm talking about? I didn't notice this because I kept hearing I people he talk about Porkins though. Jr. and I didn't notice you this You know who I'm talking about. You remember that girl? I know you're talking about this. I'll tell you, Mike, this whole uh, podcast has just been a trough of people waiting to get out the Porkins Jr. joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Been. Apparently a- Pork- Porkins Seriously. being one of my favorite characters from the original trilogy because yeah. he's the only one I can actively cosplay as. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just put on an orange uniform and everyone's like, hey, Porkins is here. People always laugh because I always thought it was pronounced cosplay. And so people always laugh at me when I say that. I thought you really thought Return of the Jedi was called Return of the Jedi. It is. It, <laughs> but I thought cosplay was like, you know, you get these girls all dressed up like Sailor Moon. And, <laughs> you know, you, you get to be tuxedo mask that night, if you know what I'm talking about. So uh, I'll just say this. Starting off with, with the thing with this particular version of Star Wars, here's the emotion that I've never felt watching a Star Wars movie. And that is genuine existential dread for every character involved because this was post breaking bad star wars the last time i felt this way watching anything was watching breaking bad where i'm like holy shit any of these people could just drop dead any second i i, I never felt like that I, watching a i, fucking I kid felt movie. there was gonna be a significant death well i knew it, there was, it was pretty be... telegraphed who it was too no, oh well, yeah of course it. Oh, no, it was telegraphed 30 years ago who it was when, when he wouldn't do interviews and never talked about wanting to be Han Solo. I couldn't believe how involved Harrison Ford was. I, I have a feeling it was just like they backed the Brinks truck up to his house, and he's like, one more time, and you have to kill me, <laughs> so I never have to do this and again. And I get to make another Indiana Jones movie. Oh, but that's did, part of the deal, yeah. Ugh, what, yeah. But did he, he wanted that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Apparently he loves Indiana Jones way more than Han Solo, which is insane because Han Solo is a much better character. And than Han Solo Indiana never Jones. appeared in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, Han- no, I, yeah, it's like, you know, Indiana Jones is not too realistic because you know most of your archaeology professors have not killed many, many people, <laughs> but Indiana Jones just shoots them down with abandon. <laughs> And then he goes back and gives undergrad C's on papers. First off, I think we can all agree Han would have shot uh, Mutt 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Mutt? Is that? Oh, God. I forgot his name was Mutt. <laughs> was Fuck like, oh, that. Well, okay, well, we know this. Harrison Ford should not breed because if you watch this movie and if you watch the other one, Harrison Ford, do not have kids or at least none of your characters because it just ain't going to turn out right. Maybe he had a little baby replicant with that girl from Blade Runner, too. Uh, but yeah, while watching it, and I, I, I knew somebody's going to die, but it felt like everybody was going to die. Because, why, did, why did it have to be him, though? Well, the, you know, I watched this movie kind of the way I watch pro wrestling at this point. I'm not necessarily paying attention to the storyline. I'm, play, I'm paying attention to backstage politics and how they oh, yeah. do subtle turns. And I'm like... Yeah, they have to make oh, a new Vader. And I'm like, how are they going to put him over? How are they going to give him that heel push? Oh, it was great. Oh, they yeah. did with... Uh, Adam Driver was what Hayden Christensen sh- should have been and probably could have been with a better director. Like a fucking mopey, angry teenager, basically. And now I want to see him die so bad yeah they're gonna, they're gonna put my ass in the seat for the next one and yeah, that's they they got their heat back absolutely. god damn it yeah absolutely. after killing it with the fucking prequels they got their heat back it was really really well done but it was also very much a jj abrams movie and the way that it looked in the way that it moved but that, what i was gonna say the the way i felt about the this sort of existential peril that all the characters were in it's because the bad guys don't fuck around like the empire there was always that element of bureaucracy where it would like kind of clog up in the system and you felt like like on Hoth, they were like, oh, well, we got time to get everybody out. This was like, oh, they're here. Oh, they're killing everybody. Okay, good, good, night was the first, good Night was the first to point out that the stormtroopers learn how to shoot. Right. Well, they Between did learn how to them. shoot, but I have to disagree on they don't fuck around. Their discipline in that first order is terrible. They've got stormtroopers deserting, and even one of the damn officers at the end chickens out and try to run away. You never did that in the Empire, because Darth Vader would choke your ass if you did the slow slightest thing wrong so the discipline that these troops had i thought w- was emo, terrible emo vader though doesn't have the power to do that the little kylo ren and stimpy yeah. there yeah he looked kind of like he looked a little bit like neighbor frank when he actually <laughs> took his took his hat off like, <laughs> oh, I, I heard goodnight shout frank and start laughing <laughs> during the film i gotta yeah, say this, yeah we go i should i want to talk about you theory nick about as long as yeah, we're yeah. I, I wish that's what happened, and I was that's why I was super excited last about going night, to see it. Last but. night, you know, uh, uh, Nick had, had a whole bottle of aristocrat two, vodka, two, two whole bottles lit. of aristocrat vodka, and he's saying to me, he says, he says, I think Luke's going to become a Sith Lord. I think it's going to happen. That's what I predict. Oh, I thought the trailer gave that away, but it, that's not what happened. Well, here's the thing, though. You could you could be like a Joseph Smith or some kind of prophet <laughs> because you got at least one person right here, brother, who was dumb enough to believe. You. Well, so I went into this movie. Go, well, you watch and see Nick Thomas be right. And then when they first showed Kylo Ren and Stempy, the who looks a little bit like you remember Tagar, Lord of the Volcano in Memphis. He also throws a lot of temper tantrums in that he, movie. Well, He's wait, wait, we check him out. Tagar, T A G R, Lord of the Volcano. He was in USWA. He he looks kind of like Kylo Ren. But when they first showed him using his powers and and pushing people and choking, grabbing people. First thing in my head is Nick's right and Luke is Kylo Ren. So the first third of the movie, I'm like, Luke is Kylo Ren. This is badass. One of the giveaways that I, I knew that Luke wasn't Kylo Ren is because Kylo Ren's lightsaber is like fucked up and like sparking and scary as shit the whole time. It's yeah. the equivalent of like carrying like a very sharp but like rusty sword. Like this thing is going to give you, you're going to die and your body will it's have like, tetanus. It's like if you ever read uh, At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft, Lovecraft yeah. and they're going by in each civilization the art and the stuff is slightly less than yeah. the one before it and right, it was right. a similar thing to that because you know if you've seen Jedi you've seen the lightsaber that Luke built is a competently built green yeah, lightsaber yeah, Right, as opposed to Kylo Ren's lightsaber, which is making noise, and it's so scary. Like people, when when I they first showed the lightsaber with the hilt and everything, all these like fucking nerds online were like, "Oh, it's fucking stupid." When he jabs when it he, into Finn, you see why I did you're it. You're like, "Oh, that's fucking yeah. awesome!" And it's so amazing because Finn has the very smooth, like the one that Anakin built. Because Anakin was uh, here's, here's the one that they don't they don't talk about. Like when when they <laughs> had that lightsaber, oh, this is the one Anakin killed all the children with. Right. Well, you know what? From they, episode three. Nobody really mind when he did that because they annoyed the shit out of me. Yeah, I, I kind of, you know, I have to say, uh, murdering of children does kind of uh, disturb me. It was my favorite goddamn thing about this movie. There was blood and no kids. It, may, uh-huh. it, uh, it was so great. And 
to to even make the better point of being like fuck the prequels were done they blew up Coruscant <laughs> which was the greatest well, moment they, they never say that it's Coruscant it's Coruscant they don't say that that was one problem I thought the movie has a lot of shit could have been clearer but, but they, they really played up some of the more Nazi aspects of the First Order because there was one sequence I'm like oh did Lenny Riefenstahl yeah, exactly. direct oh, this it was just straight up a Nur- it was, yeah. Yeah, Nuremberg Triumph of the Will Triumph of the Will yeah it yeah. totally was uh, but yeah, I uh, can I say something about that? Just long we talking about that. The one thing I didn't like in this movie was if you remember the old Star Wars, all the Imperial officers were played by really competent, like BBC type actors, and I thought the Imperial, uh, the First Order officers, mostly looked like a bunch of snotty brats. They look like Nazis, like yeah, they, they all like, like they would have been perfect Nazis. Nazis though. Yeah. But, like, I mean, which was great for their character. I mean, they that's a perfect look. Yeah, but, but uh, I, they, they all seemed a little bit kind of like whiny and wet-nosed yeah. and emo it was like You me. know, it's like the next generation, though, you know. So there was a uh, – this is like a small detail. The only thing I re- – I've loved the whole movie, but the only thing I didn't like, as I'm so used to the 20th Century Fox fanfare before the movie, that it uh, almost yeah. fucked it up for me. I was I was wanting a Disney. Like a – Something, like, you Have know? the full-on – have the castle, the – do, 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 yes, yeah, something do, 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 do. like do the castle. <laughs> Anything. It was weird. Like it, it, it. I don't know. It was just like a small detail that like would just threw me in for a loop. Yeah. When they introduced the uh, this character, uh, the droid BB-8, uh, voiced by John Ralphio from <laughs> Parks and Rec and Bill Hader mixed together. What? I read it online. You know the other weird thing I read? The stormtrooper that Ray convinces to let her out of the restraints James Bond. is Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Yeah, yeah the, he, that's his cameo. He's in a stormtrooper outfit. But uh, I, I think BB-8 actually sums up what this movie was going to be, and I'd never even considered it until I watched it. But people are like, oh, he's kind of the same character as R2-D2. It's like, yeah, but the way he looks, this movie moves fast as fuck. And you actually have to have a droid that can keep up with the characters. So that's why he looks the way he does. It's like, oh, he can roll fast and like keep up because they're going to be running the entire time. They referred to him a little too often. Though. Like they were pushing the merchandise a little too much. Like, hey, product price. I don't understand Come how here, product stays placement. on when he rolls. Huh? Well, they, they actually J.J. Uh, Abrams based the character off of a real toy that he saw in Japan. Uh, so he actually just saw like they had like a toy that rolled around. He's like, oh, there's my there's how I'm going to do that. <laughs> And I can just turn this. So it's a gyroscope. So the top of it always stays like said, level. Mike, he was money when it comes to the merchandise. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I oh, want yeah. one. Oh, yeah. You can get one that's like 150 bucks and At you Brookstone. can yeah. control it with your iPhone. Yeah. It yeah. just follows your phone around. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It's crazy. I, uh, but I can't use it because I don't have hands. It follows you. It, oh, okay. I thought it just goes after your phone or something, like when you lose it. <laughs> I'll say, no, it, this is not a, a phone attacking droid <laughs> or phone destroying droid. <laughs> but uh, I, I, that's uh, that was the thing I would I would always say like uh, I compare it to the reboot that he did of Star Trek was that that movie everybody's running the whole time as opposed to and this very one too. Busy, it was a very busy movie. Fuck yeah! As opposed to the prequels where it's like it's busy visually, but there's nothing actually happening. It's people just sitting there with like things happening around them as opposed to things actually happening. I have to say I was disappointed by the lack of trade negotiations. <laughs> it really would have There helped. were no negotiations. No. They just show up and kill people and it's badass. That was what I wanted the whole time. Phantom Menace was a lie from day one because one of the first things they say is the negotiations will be short but it goes on kind of forever. Yeah, For if three you, if fucking you, movies. If you love parliamentary procedure Oh, you know who cracked me <laughs> up You'll though? love the prequel. Was like, oh, yeah, because you know all the kids they're excited about things like the bureaucrats are in troll now and all that. <laughs> that's, how the, that's how the children played with the Phantom Menace toys. The, like, the racist uh, Japanese aliens are in yeah, control. The, 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 oh, the, we are have uh, your money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we must uh, move fast to the swap doll <laughs> communications down there. He says communications like he's one of the Muppet babies or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, it's like they used the old Charlie Chan audio. I was going to say, it in totally the was. There were two Charlie Chans. That was for the evil characters. You made a Muppet babies comparison at some point. Oh, I did, yeah, because uh, this new Star Wars, it seems like everybody's the son or the daughter of somebody from the first one. So it's like uh, the Muppet babies. Yeah, like towards the end, he looks at me and just goes like, you know, it's kind of like the Muppet babies in that respect. Like, just like while we're waiting on something really cool to happen. Yeah. Like, just out loud. Right before Han got 
killed. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we uh, on that note? What do we all think about Ray? Is Ray Luke Skywalker's daughter? I That's, think she, I think she has to be because yeah. she looks exactly like Natalie Portman. And I swear to God, they pro- that girl walked in. And they were like, holy shit, please be able to act. Please be able to act. Please be able to act. Because she looks exactly, you know. I thought she pulled it off. She was amazing. Yeah. Holy shit. And I, you know, she. Uh, I really liked the other new. I, I, I thought Finn was great. Yeah, John Boyega was awesome. Did you see Attack the Block? No, but I'm going to Dude, now. Dude, yeah. I saw that movie. And as soon as they announced him as the cast, and like, I didn't know who he was. They're like, oh, John Boyega. And uh, my friend Luke Jensen, who lives next door, was like, oh, he's the guy from Attack the Block. I was like, oh, that guy. That guy's fucking great. And he was. And he was really he great. Was fantastic. And a lot of, a lot of, more humor in was, this one than there was in all the prequels combined. It, what's crazy about this one? It managed to be both the darkest and the funniest Star Wars, which is a it's a rare feat to pull off. And Ford pulled the comedy off real good, I thought. Oh man, yeah, him and Chewie were great. Yeah, they, I mean they're always great, but like the, his, the, re- the reintroduction of Han Solo as just this dirty old space pirate. Was yeah, perfect. It was great. Yeah, I thought that was, was that was the way to do it. It reminded me of those old books they used to have, like Han Solo at Star's End and things like that. I got a question about the new Han Solo though, because me and Mike are kind of from that same. We're cut from that Han Solo cloth. You understand? Absolutely. He was he was the formative influence of my life was Han Solo, and I felt that my one problem with the movie was I got to see him just long enough to say goodbye. Yeah. And it was as if the universe was telling me, like, oh, you, you're an adult. You're a full-on adult oh, now. When, uh, Your childhood was just murdered by its own son. <laughs> Your time has passed. Absolutely. Also, we, we're never going to get to see Han and Luke together again. No. How fucked is that? When he dies, there's that moment there, and that's a spoiler, but have you ever had it, watch anybody die that you know? No, I'm serious. <laughs> like, watch a loved one die. Um, there's that uh, one. No, one. no one's run anybody I've loved uh, through with a sword. Well, so no, yeah, but I'm, you know, like, yeah, custom. Yeah. No one I know has ever fallen into an abyss. If that's the question. Well, no, I thought this was going to be a way more interesting story than it was about like you killed somebody or no, something. No, 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 no. I'm saying you've never you, seen you the life like Look, just when, float when away from somebody's eyes. Have you never seen the life drain away from your enemy? <laughs> like the end of Blade Runner. But when Custer was at the little bighorn, there's that one moment when you have to look around and just say, oh, shit. And when a loved one dies, there's that moment where you're like, oh, shit, they're about to be gone for good. And when he just fell off that thing in, it was that oh, shit moment. It was that oh, last little where he caresses oh, his oh, his it, son who just murdered his face. Yeah. I teared up, man. It was oh, a very yeah, it was emotional moment. Oh, dude, I I mean, you know, I, I kind of knew it was coming anyway. Oh, but a mile when, away. When he yeah. walked out onto that plank, I'm like, oh fuck. This yeah, is we're it. like, no, no, don't go out on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was that's the that's the fucking Breaking Bad thing where you're like, no, 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 no. And no, the, the no, moment no, no, no. I knew he was gonna die is when he's hugging uh, Princess Leah. And he was, and he was like, you know, we had some good times. And I'm like, oh shit, they're gonna kill him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to say, y'all must understand like the J.J. Abrams thing a lot better than I did because he fooled me completely. My mind started to drift because that scene was too talky. And then next thing, I'm, I'm talking about method babies. And the next thing you knew, <laughs> Han was killed. I was so stupid watching that movie that. After Nick Thomas's theory, I still believe that that Kylo Ren and Stippy was was Luke Skywalker. Even after they said he was Han Solo's son, he hadn't took the Max off yet. Now like, oh, he he's, even, he's not going to be that. Though. He's he was be Luke even Skywalker. kept saying the character name Luke Skywalker. There was no way he was going to be right. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> map to Luke Skywalker, and, and that's why. Do you remember? Do you remember when they say I'm looking you for thought Skywalker? He was just trying to con him the whole well, no, time. No, because when they say we're looking for that's Luke Skywalker, that's honestly what I thought. <laughs> yeah, when they first say we're looking for Luke Skywalker. You can see Han get upset. It's like Han yeah. knew well, you don't want to find him. There son. were there were like that. Like it made it seem like that's he was going to be Kylo Ren. I like, thought so too. I thought it would have been a great idea. I, w- I wish. I still wish that's what happened, honestly. But it still looks like my I mean, mom didn't want to believe it because I thought he was going to be even after they said he wasn't. Yeah. I'm still excited to see the new one, though. That was a great fucking ending. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ticket because everybody won't see that boy get his ass kicked. Yeah. Well, and dude, Absolutely. how gnarly was Luke, like, pulling the hand? And he's got no skin on his fake hand. He's got the robot hand just, like, pulling oh, the hood back. Hamill. That was just bad. Yeah, the, the minute he was on screen was phenomenal. Yeah. I'll tell you, actually, you want to hear my other, uh, how stupid I was during Star Wars story? I could not figure out the plot. And the only thing apparently that uh, stuck with me is that that girl had never been in a place that was green before. If you remember that, oh yes, yeah. he I did not think a- that they were going towards 
it, she, Luke Skywalker, he goes, oh, she finally found a green planet. Like, that was her whole <laughs> That's where she art. was going. She just wanted, she got the Falcon. It's like, Chewie, where can I see some green? And so they were just flying <laughs> around looking for Ireland or some shit. <laughs> I was just going to compliment how easy to understand the plot was, as opposed to me. <laughs> as opposed to the prequels, which was, I thought, like. Good night was full of Milo, so it could have thrown him off. <laughs> Maybe I can blame the aristocrat we was drinking last night. But yeah, man, it was. Uh, uh, yeah, I I enjoyed the. Hell oh yeah, out of nine that out of ten. Loved it. Yeah. You'll be super entertained. Um, I don't know why I'll say you will be. Hopefully, you've seen it. Yeah, if you're of, listening to this and you haven't seen it, this. you're a fucking asshole. Here, here's the things you need to see before you listen to this podcast: the new Star Wars. You need to know something about O.J. Simpson. What was the other one we were talking about? <laughs> Gerard Butler. I still don't. I'm going to have to find out who he is you before have I to, listen to it. You have to see Law Abiding in Citizen. <laughs> You're the only one who's actually seen it. See, see, see. Star Wars, 9 out of 10. Does Law Abiding in Citizen, 10 out of 10. Does he stay within the law? No spoilers. <laughs> does no, he stay within the law? Spoil, spoil, I'll spoil Star Wars, but I'm not spoiling Law Abiding in Citizen. Does he actually kill everybody? Like, he promises in the trailer. Law Abiding just Citizen wait and is see just it. about a regular guy just going about his day. <laughs> Mailing letters, walking his dogs and shit. I, I'm not gonna say anything. But I, no, I gotta say this though. Uh, 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 I was I was very confused uh, by the movie. Uh, I really enjoyed it though. It was not as good as Return of the Jedi, but it was probably better than all three of the prequels put together. I liked it better than Return of the Jedi. The, but Return the, of the Jedi had Return Boba of the Fett. Jedi like a, a Indian mode of but transportation. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> With, with Admiral Akbar and all that shit. And he was in the movie, too, but his sinus problem sounded like it was a little better, so maybe he got some Robitussin or something. You, like, audibly laughed out loud when Akbar showed up. <laughs> I mean, the first That's thing the same he thing says, I did with C-3PO. The first thing he says when you hear him in Return of the Jedi is... I can't, I can't watch C-3PO without laughing Dude, the entire time. Dude, C-3PO's introduction in this movie was fucking... Perfect. I fucking laughed so it hard. It was so perfect because they're they they they're hitting the Han Leia love theme. The music swelling. They're seeing each other for the first time, and then he just he literally photo bombs. Hello. Oh, you might not have recognized me because of my red arm. I fucking <laughs> lost it. I thought that was so funny. It was such a well timed little joke. It, that was why this movie was so good. Because and I was kind of really the, sad about R two D two too. It the is. fucking humor in yeah. the prequels was so stupid oh, and ham-fisted and this movie hit it exactly right like it was a movie where the, the like, humor in the prequels was like the humor in Batman and Robin right with Mr. Free yeah. Schwarzenegger is free it was that level of humor oh, it was stupid it was literally Jar Jar stepping in poop like that was a joke this one which like, apparently the word for poop in the Star Wars universe is poo doo is, is poo doo oh, yeah. yeah and he says when he sits in the poop he goes icky icky poo <laughs> Watch it back and see if it ain't true. I believe it's uh, terrible. You listen, Jar Jar's voice kind of changes depending on what he's saying. Because when they're watching that stupid pod race, there's a part we used to make fun of where he sounds like somebody kicked him in the nuts because all of a sudden he just goes, Come on, Eddie. <laughs> Remember that shit? I remember. And I thought it was bold of J.J. Abrams to bring him back for this one. Yeah. And, that he, and that he was such a pivotal that, part of the plot. That Grand Leader Snoke is actually a melted Jar Jar Binks, well, you know, you know who's what? 50 feet tall. You know what neighbor Frank said about, about uh, the movie coming up? He, say, he kept saying, I wonder if the pod race guys are going to be in the movie. Do you think they'll be in there? And the two-headed pod race announcer, uh, vo voiced by uh, Greg, Greg Proops, and uh, who's the other one? It's two comedians that I do just the voices. Knew Greg Proops. I didn't know who the other one. The was. other one's uh, also a comedian, but he wasn't speaking in. He was like speaking in uh, Hutties, I think. It's Foden Bead. That's actually their names. Right. But I was going to say in the venerable Bead. Just yeah, exactly. The other one should have been called Gregory of Tours. Just, just the line, just Han Solo saying that's not how the Force works was funnier than every joke in the prequels. Oh, yeah. oh thank God they got rid of that Metachlorian shit. Oh, they didn't. Well, you know what? If you notice, they didn't mention it in Episode Two or Three either because it was they so fucking it stupid. The, they because they had to. They mentioned it briefly during the part where uh, uh, Palpatine uh, says about like uh, Grandmaster. What was his name? That Flash. He, no, 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 Dar Darth Plagueis. That was it. Have you ever heard the legend of Darth Plagueis the Wise? So Snope is Darth Plagueis, though, right? 
We all agree no, on that? No, no, because because Palpatine kills Darth Plagueis. But Darth Plagueis like knows, can, how, can knows how to come death. back from the dead. Right. Oh, God, if it wraps around to have anything to do with the prequels. Although, you know what? Lawrence Kasdan, the guy who wrote it, said he was writing the movie based on what would happen after Return of the Jedi. He's not He's Did not paying Lawrence a lick Kasdan of fucking attention. One of the old ones? He wrote Empire and Jedi. Okay, so that might be... Although, one thing I have to say is I wasn't too clear on the situation because it's like it seemed like the Republic had been restored... But they didn't disarm the Imperial military when they won? How the hell did that happen? Right. Well, I think, you know, the way that J.J. Abrams basically explained the first, the first order is that this is like if the Nazis fell and they all escaped to Argentina and then actually started coming back, like actually like got their shit together enough in South America to come back and be so a force a story on the world as stage. yet untold in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, right. So it's basically like, you know, they have like the remnants and stuff like that. And that is the one confusing thing that they say there's the Republic, which they then theoretically proceed to blow up entirely. But there's also a resistance. And I'm always like, wait, what are they? I thought that might have been semantics. Like they only refer to the Republic as the resistance or something yeah. like that. But then Han says it later on. Right. Well, That's what a spoiler, I, by the way, folks. What I think it is is that there's... there's Han is in the film. There's the, he says the word resistance. I think that like maybe the Republic works like the UN in that they don't have uh, like an, a military arm necessarily. They can only endorse the resistance. They have a peacekeeping at, force? Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they can, well, so the resistance is... Because it's like the UN. So you have to have a bunch of funny foreign guys yeah, there to must, give it a token With your mustache, you kind of have a mean um, thing kind of going oh, on there. Uh, now you got to insult it like that. He did look like a catfish. That's the only good thing I can say about it. Yeah. And he sounded like a guy from Guatemala. I hated him. I hated him so much when I was a kid, I traded his his action figure for a couple of magic markers and a go-bot. In fact, it's some weird sort of Amazonian tribe, because I remember this, because they did a news story on it after Jedi came out. As yeah. a kid, I remember watching this, and it was some weird Amazonian dialect, and so they brought them all into some theater, which was within a thousand miles of where they lived. And yeah. So they at first they're seeing moving images on a screen for the first time, and then they're hearing their language, and they all cheered when they heard... Nien nub. Nien nub. So, yeah, a random they fact. say something like my, my nuts itch or something in their language? I don't know what. Because it could have been something dirty. I was sick, so I really don't remember the specifics of the story, but that stuck with me. Yeah. That, that was true. Wow. They, uh, but yeah, from what I gather, it's like there's the Republic, and they can't openly like go to war necessarily so they've endorsed this resistance they said that they're supporting so they're sort them. of like the confederation of states yeah like this like before the Const- the government america was in before the constitution see this discussion we're having is what the movie would have been if George Lucas made the movie. The whole goddamn movie would have been this boring ass talk. So when people are bitching about that, they're like, "Well, what is the resistance? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't jive with the existence I mean, of a who, republic." Who do they blah, trade blah. with? How did those negotiations <laughs> yes, go? Exactly. What about the banking clans? I mean, right. there's a lot you can get into. <laughs> right. They realized that like they could just as easily explain all this shit in the mountains and mountains of animated shit and literature and stuff and video games and things that's, and things and things that is going to be coming out in the next two years. That's the big that they problem. Could just go ahead and make a fun movie and not worry about the proceedings of government. That's the big problem the with the prequels. It should have been a footnote. The prequels are a footnote. Well, well, they never should have been a, a whole thing. Something just occurred to me. What is the name of that guy that's Kylo Ren's Stempa's boss there, the lead bad guy? Supreme Leader Supreme Snoke. Leader Snoke. I think I know who he is. Do you remember the guy from the banking clan? No. Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember in, in uh, uh, t- uh, Attack of the Clones, Christopher Lee is at this table with all these stupid computers. The techno union will sign your treaty count. You remember all that shit? And there's, there's one uh, guy who yes, goes... And the brave men of the Trade Federation. Yeah, and there's one guy that goes, the banking clan will sign your treaty. And I think he looks like that guy. I think that guy might be the guy. He's been ahead of the banking clan. But he's totally like a holographic projection. That was badass. So it's a by total the way. Wizard of Oz. He's gonna be like a weird Yoda. Dude, he's type gonna thing, be. Right? He's gonna be tiny. Yeah, because uh, when and I, you know what, they kind of uh, they kind of like tip their hand a little too early. I thought the way to do it. Uh, because you know he's in this throne room, and then you see that like the the film kind of jumps, and it's like oh shit, it's a projection. But I think they kind of jumped. Like what they should. I thought when the planet was blowing up, 
that would be the time to cut to the throne room and just see him totally cool, calm, and collected, and then and then the image fizzle, and you're like, oh fuck, they didn't get him. Hmm. But yeah, I uh, my prediction for that guy is that he's going to be about two feet tall. Yeah, it's a Yoda <laughs> and, type thing. Yeah, yeah, and he's going to be fucking crazy badass. Mm-hmm. But uh, who knows? Although I will say he looks way too much like Voldemort. <laughs> I'm saying he's. Harry I'm Potter. saying. I'm saying right now he's Darth Plagueis or whatever. Darth Plagueis. Yeah. Oh, God. He's dead, remember, because his his uh, uh, assistant killed him in his sleep. Allegedly. Yeah. 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 D- don't trust anything that snake oil salesman Palpatine says. Yeah, that's right. Oh, God. Well, that'll get you. Well, that's right to the dark side, <laughs> wake baby. Up and you be Darth Frankenstein. All thing come out of your mouth is no. Also, at no point did any character go no. Also, at no point did any old lady go, Storm is coming, Annie. I can feel it in my bones. Oh, God, did someone say that in the fucking... Yeah. yeah, Phantom Menace, remember that? No, I what? Don't, I don't like sand. It gets everywhere. Oh, fuck. Of course, let it go everywhere. <laughs> Not here. You're everything that's soft and smooth. Oh, God. Oh. So real quick, who's everyone's favorite new character? Oh, the fucking prequels. Ugh. Can I say Han Solo? <laughs> Yeah, it was. It, we got him back just long enough to say goodbye. Oh, That's the sad part. We didn't even mention Oscar Isaac, who I'm hoping love has that. Love, a much bigger role in the next. Love Poe Dameron. Yeah, Poe Dameron. He was fucking awesome. Because see, the the figures have been out for a few months, and I didn't know what to do with it because we didn't know the story yet. So right, I've just been right. using him as a Lewin Davis action figure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to him. I'm like, oh, Lewin, are you going to be able to sleep indoors tonight? Where's your cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That, wow, that Are you gonna play movie. some set songs, dude? Uh, this it's is a a, this is an aside. That movie was good, but I, as soon as I heard the music, I literally was like, "Oh God, there's a Mumford. There's a Mumford in here somewhere." And oh, sure enough, in the fucking the you know, it's like music by T Bone Davis and Mumford and Sons. I was like, "Oh fuck you!" So that ruined that movie for me. Mumford, the, the how just, old is Mumford that he all his children are in his band? I know it's bullshit. Yeah, I, know. I don't know, my, you know, I'm not trying to be too political, but I think Mumford should have looked at the whole pro-choice thing because then we could have been spared from his sons. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. Yeah, listen to the soundtrack. It's totally like you know a, a guy whose dad is in the House of Lords and you're talking uh, decreed he have a band. That's what Mumford and Sons is. I'm wait not a fucking second. around. The lead singer of Mumford and Sons, his father is in the House of Lords, and his dad is like, I do decree that my son will have a Grammy. I thought you were talking about Star Wars, not Lou and Davis. No, I'm talking about <laughs> Lou and Davis now. I, this is a complete oh, sidebar. But bringing it back around to Star Sorry. Wars, though, wasn't there a movie called Mumford written by Lawrence Kasdan? Or was it his son? Mumf? Wait, with uh, we had Jason Lee was in. Oh, it see, I get Mumford confused with Clifford. <laughs> yeah, uh, Clifford? Dog? No, the Martin Short movie. No, Clifford's actually entertaining. I know. Oh, the big yeah, red I, dog. That's the only movie I have downloaded to my PS3. Clifford with Martin Short. I love that fucking movie. Can I say one thing? You know, one thing I really liked in the movie, and it was actually the thing that kind of won me over to the new characters, was um. When they start to take off the Millennium Falcon and they don't know how to fly it, oh, it's hilarious. I thought that was real because you never see anything like that in Star Wars. Everybody always knows what they're doing, and watching the two of them not knowing what they're mm. doing had a real charm. I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then when they start getting into the mechanics of it, and her and Han Solo start going back and forth about you know how the the ship works and everything, and she really knows her shit. You're like, oh, this is totally what everybody's been like. Oh, why not like, uh, like I feel like this this movie was uh, uh like they basically deconstructed all of the character traits of the original three characters and then just mixed them all up because because de- Ray has like the she's got the me- you know the mechanical kind of know-how of Han Solo but she's probably going to end up being a Jedi you know if they all they all have different aspects of, of remember, previous characters if you remember uh, uh, in the prequels it was established that Darth Vader had a certain technical skill so I thought it might have been that she was a Skywalker and she had that same kind of technical skill. Well, do you do you think she is a Skywalker or is she just someone strong in the Force? I think she's Luke Skywalker's daughter, like straight up, which is which would explain the look on his face when he sees her. You know, it's like oh, because that was that's why R two D two was powered down because he was waiting for her to show up. Like that's why he hit her away because he knows what's going to happen if you do that because it's his story as well. So you know he's got to like put this person away because Kylo Ren becomes a threat or whatever. I don't know how much different they're supposed to be in ages, but they appear to be about the same age. Uh, so who the hell knows? But yeah, I, that's that's what I think. I think uh, you know, Star Wars is is the new trilogy is going to be what the old trilogy was about, which is uh, bad parents. Oh sure, <laughs> yeah. Luke's Luke's the new Yoda, Han's the new Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, yeah, they're all like just and they're all just shitty at being dads. 
<laughs> and can we find a new plot to instead of just blowing something big up? Can we can we get away from that? Yeah, well, you know what? I felt that was almost a reboot aspect of it. Is like you have to, you know, you had to do that in order to go in the weird direction that I hope they're going to go with the next few movies. Was to because that has been the main criticism of this movie is that it's essentially the same exact plot as New Hope, which it is, but it also introduces a new uh, emotional aspect to the story and a new pace, which is really important as sure. opposed to the prequels, which fucking plot on like an old fucking elephant just the slowest most plotting low energy bullshit whereas this was like oh fuck like i gotta i gotta pay attention because shit's moving real quick uh so and that's that's why like what i said that's what's indicative of bb8 you know he's the he's the quick moving plot of this movie <laughs> i thought the movie uh, plot wise was kind of like um if you took like the first three movies and put them in a blender yeah. You know, and maybe put in an extra help and a new hope and some empire and some Jedi. And you got the movie. Y'all mentioned um, when you saw Han walk out onto that thing, mm-hmm. you yeah. thought you got, y'all guys thought, oh, he's going to die. I was sitting there not understanding the movie too good thinking, damn, everything in this has to be just like in the old movie. <laughs> Father has to confront son again in front of a giant gap out on a bridge. <laughs> By the way, they still something who designs, I guess those little bug men from Tech of the Clones, who designs Imperial like star bases? The architecture the, very similar. Well there's huge gaps everywhere you can just <laughs> fall into. And there's no guardrails, which they have no concern for safety. The there's no OSHA. Well, look, or yeah, well look, we don't know that Han's dead. There could have been a net down there. <laughs> That, that wound, like they have it plants in China that, where they make the iPhone and shit that wound, for workers trying to kill themselves. Exactly. And their wound is instantly cauterized. It's not it would be beyond the realm of reason to say you couldn't bring Han Solo back. Well, then the planet melted down, too. So they, oh, they, fair point. Yeah. They pretty yeah, definitively fair, killed him. Yeah. Fair point. They, uh, but that planet could have been made of like carbonite, and some of it liquefied <laughs> and then surrounded I, I will say, I just rewatched Empire, by the way, and I think everybody should. First of all, if Finn turns out to be Lando's kid, I will be fucking furious. <laughs> That's been like the, the scuttlebutt online is like, oh, is Finn actually like the, you know, the bastard son of Lando and Leia? I'm like, yeah, just dude, be a new unrelated just, character. Just have him be a guy who gets it, man. That's because, gonna that's gonna happen. But but that's you know what? No, that would happen if Lucas was involved. I trust them. Finn's just gonna be a guy who's kicking ass and has no relation to the other black guy in Star Wars that fucks because Mace Windu don't fuck. But, uh, but I liked his <laughs> his character arc of, of the reluctant storm. God, I thought, I thought it was, was fantastic. Also, that first scene with him where a guy puts a bloody handprint on his mask. I was like, oh, this is this is something new. Uh, <laughs> I, I just rewatched Empire. It's everybody should go back and just watch Lando's scenes. I realized that Lando is essentially a Republican. <laughs> The whole time he's walking around, he's just going, oh, God, I've got trade unions just breathing down my neck. Oh, all these people are complaining about the conditions in my Tabina gas mines. I got to shut the fucking peons down. Oh, yeah. He's the Ben Carson of a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, yeah. He's more charismatic than Carson. He's more of a Trump type, except that he really hates trade unions. The Cloud City is just Trump Tower writ large. Yeah, yeah. uh, Hanging in a cloud And he's just like, "I, I feel like I should be able to pay these people whatever I want. I've just made a deal that'll keep all regulations out of here forever because that's what the fucking trade deal was. Oh, but oh, the one, that was the thing I was going to say. Oh, strictly speaking, though, all the good guys from Star Wars were small R Republicans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and also, have you ever read uh, Easy Riders and Raging Bulls? It's a it's a book about like this like the you know second golden age of cinema in the seventies and they essentially argue that because the whole seventies all the movies The Godfather and Taxi Driver and Apocalypse Now all all these movies are focusing on anti heroes and people of questionable morality that you as the audience are asked to bypass your own morals to root for these people and they're like oh well Star Wars was essentially a reactionary film because there is no gray area this is good v evil and the 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 book essentially blames ronald reagan on george lucas you know like in so many words they're just like oh this is a reactionary film about the cold war this is a time where america's doing questionable shit russia's doing questionable shit and george lucas steps in and is like no we are the good they are the bad dirty harry is what you could have blamed for ronald reagan yeah but you got a point there because so much of reagan's policy was built around his star wars initiative Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, you can he, make a case for that. It's a give and take relationship between Luke, Lucas and 
Reagan. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Nice. Because, you know, we got into this a little bit, and then we got off. Who, who was your favorite uh, new character in the movie? I don't know if I have one yet, because I still don't quite know what was going on. Uh, I really liked Ray. I yeah. think she, she completely won me over. I liked her uh, competence, her not needing to be a damsel in distress. Oh, that was hilarious. He yeah. kept trying to grab her hand, and she's like, quit touching my hand. Nick, who was your favorite character in the film? <laughs> Uh, probably Ray. Like, I don't, I don't kind of like him though. I don't know, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't say Han Solo. I mean, that's clearly my fucking favorite. Oh well, but. yeah, of course. I mean, new, new, but new, new, probably Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I like Ray. I mean, I like all, all three of them, and I yeah, think yeah, it, Finn and Poe were. I want to see more of, of Poe. That, that's but the thing. They did. I liked a, Finn a lot. Too. They did a really good job of making me give a shit about the three new main characters. You know, like as opposed to the prequels, where I'm like, I hate all these people. I don't care. I'm gonna watch this because I, except I'm, I, Smith. yeah, except for Jimmy <laughs> Smith. Yeah, I wish they had found a way to bring in Mariska Hargitay and just make a Law & Order fucking sandwich of the Star Wars films. Or iced tea, hell. Bring in iced tea. I was going to say, uh, you know, I, I think I had a hard time finding... Uh, I liked the movie. Uh, you know, I'm not dissing that and everything. But of the new characters, I don't think any of them really jumped out at me as, like, oh, that's my favorite or anything like that. I was entertained by the movie, and I was willing to accept the new characters. I didn't dislike them. But I don't think any one of them jumped out. Even a lot yeah. of the bad guys, like, uh, uh, didn't, like, do much. I like Kylo Ren. I thought he was an effective bad guy. I definitely pay a ticket and see five more movies, hoping he gets his head split open. Well, I don't know that I'm going to like the dynamic between Ray and Chewbacca. Yeah, I hope it's going to be fucking weird. I hope they put Lando back. That that's what I'm hoping for because you know, Annie Billy D. Williams and a little bit of Colt 45. Hell yeah, baby. Yes, yeah, absolutely. About. I'm kind of pissed he wasn't in this one, but you know, surely he'll come around. Hopefully. I mean, they need to because otherwise, you know, Star, Star Wars was He's, never the most diverse movie. Let's put it that way. Well, to be fair, he wasn't in the first Star Wars either. He popped up in the second yeah. and third. Yeah, that's so. true. And sometimes yeah. when you get a movie series, your favorite character can be from the second one. I love the first Planet of the Apes, but I like the Gorilla General in the second one, my favorite character in that series. I've got a question for you all, right? Because this is sort of McLaughlin group, right? You can't see us right now. We are wearing clothes except on our feet. But we're all sitting on chairs kind of like on a panel show. And so I have a panel question for y'all. And then like on the McLaughlin group, I'm going to tell you what the actual answer is at the end. <laughs> what do y'all think those things are in Han Solo's pockets? As obviously that was his uh, nitrous so he could get high, you know, if he needed to. Okay, good answer. Nick, what do you think? I'm just going to wait for your answer because that's really all I can... Because you know what it is. Because I, I know what it is and that's all I can think of. Uh, they are... I thought, uh, because you'll notice that uh, Imperial officers have the same thing, yeah, that it's a rank, like it's a designation. Like if you have, you know, it's like a star for a general, like three like three stars, captain, whatever. But also Han has a different uniform that doesn't appear to be standard in any way. So I'm thinking maybe it's his leftover like war medals, essentially, like being like, yeah, I'm fucking Han Solo. This That's was from my uniform. An interesting theory. However, uh, they are not a rank badges for Imperial officers. They're pants because everything in the Empire had to be filled out in triplicate, so they went through a lot of ink, you understand. Now, as to what's actually in Han Solo's pockets, they are little CO2 tubes for his BB gun, because he has one of them, you remember them ones that look like a 357 Magnum, and you, and you put the CO2 up in there, and the little thing, you fire pellets out of it? I think you mean for his BB-8 gun. Uh-huh. <laughs> We should end on that. I think that's the way it is. <laughs> end on him choking to death. <laughs> well, that's our uh, that's our little uh, Star Wars mini set. So, spoiler alert! Thanks for tuning in. Goods from the Woods was mixed, edited, and distributed by me, Rivers Langley. You can find the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by DJ Smiles. Check him out on Twitter at DJ Smiles. 